One of the greatest debates in psychology and true crime is nature versus nurture, or the extent to which particular aspects of behavior are product of either inherited or acquired influences. According to psychology.org, nature is what we think of as pre-wiring and is influenced by genetic inheritance and other biological factors. Nurture is generally taken as the influence of external factors after conception, like the product of exposure, life experiences, and learning learning of an individual. After tonight's story about one child who murdered two at the tender age of 10, what do you think? I gotta say, it is chilly down in Charleston this past weekend. Yeah, I heard it's supposed to go back up in temp, though, in a few days. Well, it's gotten me in the spirit. I, I will say, yeah, I, I'm kind of disappointed if it goes back up, because as much as I... I mean, well, okay, so here's the thing. I kind of like this weather here because it reminds me of home. Like, when I left, uh, the, I went to the grocery store this morning. When I left my house, I caught a whiff of the leaves, which I never get to, I never catch that down here because it always smells like the South and, like, humidity. It smells like the South. It's true. The South has a distinct s- smell. Like, when I went, when we went. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Not a bad smell. Like, it just, <laughs> like, it just smells Oh, it just smells like cow shit. No, it's, no, it's. Like, that's what you're gonna say. No, say that's it. not what I'm gonna say. When we used to go to Orlando, when we would fly into Orlando and go to Florida visit my grandmother, like I knew we were in Florida because the air smelled different than back home. Well, Florida just smelled like white trash. No, it's. <laughs> I don't know. Someone out there's got to be able to back me up. I get the uh, the cold, crisp fall air, like in the smell of leaves. Anyway, I pr- I would prefer it to be chilly. In this time of year, because once the holidays are over, yeah, I'm ready for warm weather. Like, that's how my mind operates. I hate January and February. See, I don't mind it because here's the thing. I would rather have it be cool so, and I can layer up and, you know, put some layers on. Um, I also, when I was leaving the grocery store today, um, <laughs> I saw someone walk out with a beer advent calendar They've got wine ones at Costco, and they also have a dog treat one. Ooh. And I was like, well, I'd have to buy three in order for this to make Four, and then I'd reimburse you. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a lot of, of things there. Well, no, you could just do, you could, like, rotate who gets the treat. Oh, no. <laughs> that would not work in this household. <sighs> Luna just tries to snatch anything that comes in yeah. front of her. All right, let's get it going. I will say, I got to say what we're drinking, which Jen picked out, and it is really delicious. It's called Willie's Super Brew, and it's hard seltzer and real fruit with hoppiness, and it tastes like a an IPA, lazy IPA, hazy, hazy IPA. Hazy IPA. With, I'm the lazy IPA. With, <laughs> but it's a seltzer, and it's really delicious. Yeah, and there's only 13 carbs and 200 calories. 13. Team good. Carbs. I've been working on my fitness. Work, I'm up in the gym. I've been working on my fitness. Me too, actually. I was started running at basketball. Nice. And honestly, I know that like it may not look like it, but my jeans feel a little bit less. Um, and they feel a little less tight. I think That's that good. maybe I dropped half a pound or something. <laughs> All right. We got some cool ass comments up on the blog. Let me blog. look at these things. Oh, Ellie May said about the the Russian student that sawed his own neck off. Blood looks totally real. Usually it looks fake in movies because it's made too thin and see-through, like corn syrup. Surprised you know that. Well, she look, read the rest <laughs> of her comment. As the corpse as the corpses have that ashy waxen appearance they get when blood isn't circulating anymore i've worked in a funeral home oh there you go i believe the perp had to saw oh i believe the perp held the saw to his neck and then turned it off Uh, so that's what i was i I didn't even think about that good thought because i was thinking that dude just like Uh, like inching it close uh, to his neck but yeah it makes sense "Ah!" (laughs) yeah Ah! that's a really good point actually Uh, Jerry says about the Grant Amato. People love that case. She should be an accessory to mur- murder. Just mm. Google the name Addie Sweet. Mm. Oh, Connie says about KFC. This is from the 
Oh, the Bryce Rhodes rapper. They actually genetically altered their chickens not to grow feathers. She said it's disgusting. Don't eat KFC. That is kind of screwed up. Yeah, that's weird. Well, we do have uh, a couple new... Actually, I think just one for this week, but I just mailed out a whole bunch of stickers. Mm-hmm. My hand was tired after writing uh, notes yesterday to get all of our, our newest Supremos out. Uh, but Evan, welcome to you. And thank you for joining and supporting us on Patreon. Evan. Yay, Evan. Um, and let me look, get through, pull up our surprise shot list. One moment. I know I had a friend named Evan before in my lifetime, but I cannot remember. I feel like everyone has a friend named Evan. Evan was my first kiss. Oh, my God. <laughs> Actually. Not this Evan. At least I hope not. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That'd be weird. Because if you're listening, she's not going to get feedback. No, but if you're not, actually, then maybe she will. It hey. was the worst kiss I've ever experienced. It was my first and worst it was awful. Like even worse than me. Yeah, like his tongue was all over my face and we we're making out in a movie theater and it what was What movie was it? Starsky and Hutch. Oh, yeah. with Ben Stiller? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Terrible movie. It was a terrible movie and a terrible kiss. So, Evan, hope it's not you. Did he do the popcorn thing? No, he did not do no. the popcorn What's thing. What's the popcorn thing? Where you, do you put a hole in the bottom no, of the popcorn? No, we were in 7th grade. Okay. People do that? Yeah. Jan, tell us about your first kiss. Mm. I I briefly recall somebody saying something to the effect of, I like kissing her, even though she just threw up. (laughs) That wasn't my first kiss. (laughs) (laughs) That was the most memorable one for for John. I said that was... Like, the fact that he has a diary of my romantic rendezvous uh, is just another I was at the bar and this guy came up to me and was like you know your friend Jen I really like kissing her she's a great kisser even though she just threw up all over the place I'm like well that is pretty interesting I am going to use that against her for the rest of her life <laughs> to be fair I wasn't all over the place I bent over the side rail on highway 17 on um uh, it, yeah. and arts that was a fun night. That was a fun night. And then, like, even though I wanted that date to end, John was like, hey, why don't, <laughs> why don't you come don't you over? Come back? <laughs> I just like to torture you. Yeah, it was weird because I, wo- I like, he, like, wouldn't let me leave the guest room. And then I went to my own room and I woke up and he was staring at me. Oh, that's... <laughs> that's maybe, I, maybe he wanted to be featured on the show. <laughs> that's how you know you got to keep her. <laughs> so, yeah, John does that to me all the time. But um, <laughs> my first kiss, I'm trying to think... It was like Valentine's Day and it was in college, but I was home. No, it was after college. And I went on this date with this guy and I was not expecting him to slip the tongue in. And I was like, can you not? Like, (laughs) (laughs) and that ended. (laughs) I was, I, I. I, I have not kissed that many people. Can you not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what like, if you had like a Gene Simmons tongue that just kind of ew all the way down? No, down through your colon. Ew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> colon. Mega colon. Uh, so we got some great stories tonight. See some of you guys on live chat. Thank you so much. If you want to join us live every Sunday, talkmurder.com slash join. Become a supporter, and you can talk to us live as we record these episodes. Also, if we have a a, a smaller tier there, smaller tacos, right? Small the tacos. small taco, yeah. Small taco. And if you don't like ads, and you can... Well, technically, um, all of our tacos have no ads, but if that's the most important thing to yeah. you... So if you, um, for some reason, a lot of people do this, I don't know why, but... You listen to one episode, then you decide to go back and listen to all of them. You might just want to pay the three dollars and just binge them right there without yeah. the ads. Even though I shouldn't say that because we'll actually lose money on that deal. <laughs> yeah, future John <laughs> might want to <laughs> listen Darren, to all Darren already ads. shouted out future John. Uh, all right, tonight we got some. Tonight we got some really great episodes. We're doing a couple requests. All of these requests. 
You've got a lot of requests, actually. <sighs> I'm trying. I got to log them all for you. I am officially, as of right now, starting request. And that means I am not doing anything but request. So this request is, and I told you all last week, we're doing the Mary Bell case. Mm-hmm. So let's see who requested this. I'll pro- I might have to put this in later because I don't. Rem- I don't know if it's a comment. Oh, oh, Malachi. fucking Malachi. Okay, we're doing two episodes from Malachi. The first one's Mary Bell, and the second one he requested is Randy Stair. That's a case I've been wanting to cover for a while. But we're going to do the Mary Bell case first. Then we're going to do uh, the Randy Stair case, which will be out on Thursday. Or actually, was that another? So Malachi requested that one too. Yeah, Malachi coming in hot with all these. I requests. know. So yeah, so Thursday the Randy Staircase, Tuesday when you're listening to this the Mary Bell case, and then one more, and we're covering the case by Jamie Lee Jordan. So remind me to um, shout her out on the episode. But she requests the Ryan Waller and Heather Kwan case. So these are all three requests. All three of these this week are requests. And until the 300th episode, I'm going to get all these requests out the way. Because we're on track, right? Yep. If we do three each Yeah, week. we have to do three a week for the rest of the year. Oh, I just did. We just launched 276. We got to do three a week. I wrote it on the calendar. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't. Use calendars. So. Well, I wrote it on the calendar. We have to do three a week. This every this week building reminds me of the wire, even though I know it's mm. not. But you know, like that, um, like the row houses. No, yeah, but no. Remember that season where they had the, um, what was it called? What did they call the place? Oh yeah, where they were dumping the bodies in there. No, they weren't dumping the bodies there, but they like allowed the people to do, to sell drugs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That, they just actually having, just the tent in there just kind of I don't know it just kind of reminds me of you guys right well we got you shots and all kinds of shit and y'all are I way got, behind Jen yes they are behind you the bongos well yeah I took the- said bongos uh, and next Monday is actually National Drummer Day National oh. Drummer Day so yesterday was Na- National Bison Day for the protection of bison so we we went out and got a bison burger oh to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> did anyone ever clear up what the difference between bison and buffalo are? Actually, I did on my episode. Oh. Would you like to know? I would. Okay. So there are actually no buffalo here in the United States. They're actually all bison. Buffalo refers to there's like two different kinds of buffalo, an African and an Asian buffalo. One's a water buffalo, and I can't remember. It, but the uh, bison have bigger humps and they essentially use them as like snow plows so they can plow themselves through the snow um and they have smaller horns than hmm. buffalo but the meat tastes the same they are very similar in an animal yes but like what you find here even though some people call them buffalo they're actually really bison there you have it all right do it who's this for evan megan evan megan 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 yeah all right, Megan, this is for you. Surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. All right. Thank you so much, Megan. Let's hope this is a good shot. Did she request this? No. Y'all need to request some shots when y'all are. I know, and uh, like I'm going to the liquor store next weekend. You so. say that every week. Oh, I know. This, what? Dude, I this, know I do, but this is I not actually mean good, it this dude. time. This does not smell good at all. Let me see. Yes, it does. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking tequila. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <sighs> Man, I knew I forgot something at the store. <sighs> That brings me back to my military days. I love tequila. When I was in Mexico. I, oh forgot, God. I forgot to get uh. mineral water so that we could try the baking oh, soda trick. Oh, yeah. Uh, ah, that was gross. Yeek. Tonight, we're covering the Mary Bell case. This is a request from Malachi. If you're new here, this is the Talk Murder to Me podcast. I put all my 
photos, videos, and sources on talkmurder.com. This is episode 277, the Mary Bell case. And actually, I had uploaded a blog post about this, I think a year ago, and that Brienne had wrote, written. Mm. And this is the first time we're doing the case, but it actually got shared quite a bit. But I'm going to put this on the front page for you guys. So this is where you would uh, want to go. So go to the front page, talkmore.com. And May 25th, 1968. We're going to the northeastern city of Newcastle. Um, our school had a study abroad program that was based in Newcastle. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So here's what I know about Newcastle. There's parts of Newcastle that are extremely wealthy and other parts that are the slums, as you're seeing in this photo right here. The killer in tonight's story, Mary Bell, lived in one of these apartments. So basically, the British Industrial Revolution started and... It brought a lot of prosperity, a lot of shipping, a wealth came into Newcastle. But just like with with any big city, there's always like a slum attached to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what this area specifically was, at least where they were living. This is eight point five miles away from the North Sea. So Darren on live chat says run down areas with a loss of jobs. Yeah, so a lot of the people, I, I think I saw the the unemployment rate during this time was like 45% or something. Wow. It was incredible. I was like, holy shit. There's nothing but crime and a lot of prostitution and everything else. Alcoholism, crime, and murder is what one newspaper said. The children played in the streets. They called it the Tin Lizzie. Y'all heard Tin Lizzie, right? Yeah, they called, that's the Ford model. The mm. early car. Is that what it's called? The, yeah, in the 20s. Tin Lizzie was the car. Mm-hmm. Well, that could be another That reference. was like the nickname, right? Yeah. yeah. The Model T was the actual name. Well, isn't Tin Lizzie a band? An old band? Tin Lizzie. Lizzie. Oh, Tin Lizzie. Damn it. Now, the papers that, the, all the papers that, all the papers that I looked at on this case refer to it as Rat Alley. Oh, well, that's not an appealing name. Why would what was a voice for? <laughs> he sounded kind of like she's cringing and talking uh. at the same time. So Rat Alley, they would actually refer to the two killers in tonight's case, Mary Bell and Norma Bell. No relation. They were neighbors, direct neighbors. They lived right next to each other, but they they weren't related. Interesting. Maybe Bell was a common name back then. The papers all referred to them as the Rat Alley kids. Mm. That's what. And basically, it means exactly what it uh, says, rat alley. I mean, if you look at the picture right there, there's probably a lot of rats in there. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. <clears throat> I don't like rats. No. Mm-mm. Not even ratatouille? I love ratatouille, but I hate rats. Some people keep rats as pets. That's fucking weird. All right, can you describe... <laughs> They're supposed to be very loyal. <clears throat> Can you describe this guy for us? Or this this kid? A child. This child for us. Probably like two years old, maybe. Looks like a little toddler. This is actually the first victim. Oh, no. Right here. Now, how, I mean, do you know anything about Mary Bell? Like, how old is she? I've I've heard the name before, but I couldn't tell you anything about it. One really interesting thing before we really dive into it. When you see some, when you see a case... Like, for instance, first thing that came to mind is the Carla Homolka case where Mm. she gets out of prison and then not only does she change her name, but that name is protected by the government. So a journalist can't snoop around and track them down and stuff like that. That law, the Mary Bell law or whatever, is from this case because she gets out of prison and she does change her name. And that's what that's where they invented that the 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 whole making it private mm. and securing it and stuff like that. Mm. So we're going to eighty five Street Margaret's Road. This is May twenty fifth, nineteen sixty eight. Who you're looking at right now is Martin Brown. He is four years old and two months at the time of his death. He is found inside a uh, kind of a derelict building. It was vacant at the time. 
around 3.30 p.m., a local boy, his name was Walter Long, testified that he saw two girls climbing out through the basement window before his body was discovered at 3.30. So this local kid, and let me just explain this right quick because I know this is going to come up. Martin Brown and all the other kids, even the two-year-olds or whatever, the 10-year-olds, the 12-year-olds, the reason they're called the Rat Alley kids is because they all played in the alley all day long. Mm -hmm. They're all out in the alley doing whatever, playing, being kids, and they were just outside in the alley all day long. All of them were. So you would have a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old playing with a four-year-old or a two-year-old. And he would be away from the parents and, you know what I'm saying, just kind of in the protection, if you will, of a whole group of children. That's the Rat Alley kids. That's why this boy was playing with the kids and he wasn't, you know, at home or whatever. But he's four years, four years, two months old. He was found dead on waste ground in this, and I'm going to show you the apartment, uh, near his home. The paper describes Martin Brown as a sturdy little boy, blonde, blue eyes, round, mischievous face. I I guess that one picture on the left kind of, he does look mischievous. He lived at 140 St. Margaret's Road, and he did have a one-year-old sister named Linda. So if you want to read this, this is from The Guardian, 1968. I ran up to the houses and I had seen a crowd of people stand outside and this guy had Martin in his arms and he was gray. Okay, that's from the mother. So basically here's how the body was found. A day worker, like an electrician, found the body and then carried him out and he was already long past dead. They didn't think it was a murder at the time, but later they figured out that it was. This is the... Oh, this is where he was found. Do you see that corner right there? Poor thing. So he was found right there. He was lying on his back on the rubber covered floor with his arms outstretched and blood and saliva coming from his mouth. All right. So let's talk about this, because for for a while, his death was considered accidental. Okay. As you see there, his arms were outstretched and blood and saliva coming from his mouth. That's exactly how he was found. Mm. However, his clothing was not torn or damaged. He had no broken bones. He had no external injuries. And close to his body was an empty pill bottle. I think Mm. it was like Advil or some sort of painkiller. And they actually believe that he had ingested those pills. Oh, And that's how he would die. Right there. Now, so they actually mark this as an accidental poisoning. At first, they later find out that Mary Bell and Norma Bell killed him. So, I mean, this is I, this is a serious question. How long does do overdoses t- typically tend to take? That's a really good question. I should have cleared this up earlier, but in this neighborhood, in this part of Newcastle, in this slum. The cops are going to do bare minimum with anything. The people that live there are poor. They're unemployed. They don't pay taxes. Crime is rampant. So the fact that they just marked them down as an accidental poisoning means they basically just didn't care at the time. Right. But I'm asking, like, how long was it before he was found? You know, because they said they saw the girls climbing out of the basement window. How long? How long did it take? Like, if he has the, if he w- did ingest those pills, like, how long does it typically take to? Well, he there, he he also had no bruisings or anything else. So, I mean, how would and he didn't have any marks on his neck? He wasn't choked or anything. Plus, the bottle was right there, so it was kind of. I mean, I don't know how long it takes to overdose, but. I'm pretty sure I've never seen anyone overdose and blood comes from his mouth. Maybe that's the thing. I don't know. Mm. Unless like there was because he was so young, it caused like some sort of reaction and on his innards. But I will tell you that the police did get a lot for this once they figured out that it was that he was murdered. And it's because the neighborhood they were in. 
that I mean, the society did not care for this neighborhood at all. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, I mean, child or not, at the time, I mean, this is 1968. Things were different, a lot different. Mm-hmm. So, child or not, to them, oh, well, it's just one more mouth that society doesn't have to feed type of thing. I mean, that is the, the sentiment that I got from the newspapers reading about this case. Anyway. Crazy. Mm. So, three kids actually found martin first but an electricity board workman around the area named john hall he came in and he tried cpr which the papers refer to as quote the kiss of life i've never heard that before the kiss of life but tried cpr and could not resuscitate him the next day the very next day in the building they found this if you want to describe this We did murder Martin Brown. Fuck off. Well, it actually says fuck of. You. Bastard. Bastard. So they found they found a few notes that were tacked up on the wall right where his body was resting. The notes are scribbled. Says, quote, we did murder Martin Brown. Fuck off, you bastard. And another one said, quote, I murder so that I may come back, end quote. It either looks like a child wrote it or it was written with the opposite dominant hand. Okay, so we do know it was a child. In fact, so I already told you it was Mary Bell that did this. You guys. Well, you didn't tell us how old Mary Bell was. This is what they found in Mary Bell's notebook right here. Very different handwriting, Mm -hmm. though. So this is Mary Bell. She wrote this in... Or she drew this in her notebook. It basically outlines the day. It's kind of difficult to read. But at the bottom there, you see Martin Brown on the floor. You see that? You see him right there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you see the workman, because he's got a pickaxe, so apparently he's a workman, coming over to give aid. She's basically describing how things went down. Now, this is the one that killed him. And this is what they found in her notebook. And then you see the the pill bottle right here that says tablet. Yeah. So she talks about in this note how he accidentally ate a bunch of pills. That's basically what what she says here. So Mary Bell is a child killer. We, do you want to guess? But she's how, a child herself. Yeah. Do you want to guess how old she was? Six. Oh no, she's running cursive, so eight. I was gonna say eight too. I'll say eight. Too. You know, I never learned cursive. A lot of people, they stopped teaching it. Well, when I went through school, they were teaching it, but I had transferred from a school that was supposed to learn it, but it was a really crappy school, to a school that had already learned it, so I missed it. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know they didn't teach it. So you don't know how to write in cursive? I mean, all all you gotta do is write in print and then connect the letters. I know how to do that, like with little squigglies and shit. Kind of. a little different. (laughs) I um I always I actually pretty much always write in cursive and I know how or to it's s- like a half halfsies and I know how to sign your name that looks like you and Jen's name because remember oh. we did that thing where we had a uh where we had to apply for those credit cards oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Jen's got a lot of debt in her name <laughs> <laughs> that's true even without your forging of my signature uh, you know my uh, signature I I don't think I've ever seen signed. Excuse me, signed the, the same signature exactly the same twice. Hmm. Interesting. Like there's always like it it always comes out just a little bit different. Like if I'm signing documents for school, uh, I'll I'll keep signing it, but it never comes out. Maybe you should just get a stamp. I thought about it, but that's <sighs> I just feel like that's copping out. No. If you sign a lot of things, totally worth it. Tonight Nicole's gonna be reading from a book, Cries Unheard. Why Children Kill the Story of Mary Bell by Gitta Sirini. Hmm. I read it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and <laughs> it's the only book on the case. She was a... Re- oh, surprising. Yeah. She was a reporter. I mean, there's other books, but this is like the one, right? She it's was like re- the authority. She was a reporter at the time, so she covered the case. But the reason 
And she gets a lot of shit for this book. And we're about to go into it real quick. But the reason I think it's terrible is because assuming Mary Bell is a psychopath, like everyone in the world assumes that knows the case. It seems like if you read the book that the author, the journalist, the researcher is easily persuaded by a lot of things that Mary Bell says and actually makes her look really good and that it she makes society look bad mm. about it. I'm just saying, and, not, and it's mm. not only me. That's the reason I don't like the book. I think, because I see that sometimes, like, you know, if you interview killers or whatever, they can persuade you, man. As a journalist, you need to stay... You, you need to be so, aware of so that So you're shit, saying dude. that the child helped persuade the journalist the, in making no, her, no. Her, herself look this better? This is 18 years after uh-huh. Mary Bell does interview, or she interviews Mary Bell when Mary Bell is, I don't know, f- almost 40 or 40 or something like that. And the whole book makes it seem like Mary Bell was the victim in this whole thing it was society it was this her parents was yada 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 and i mean yeah to a point but the the researcher the author is just you she's easily persuaded you could tell she's not asking those tough questions you know i'm not the only one that fucking hates the book Hmm. if you want to read this here's someone else that hates it June Richardson, the 53-year-old mother of Martin Brown, in an interview with The Observer last week, said, Mary Bell died when she left prison and took on a new identity. I thought of her as dead. I tried to have a decent life. I started to learn not to hate her because she had died and became someone else. Now Gitya Sereni has resurrected her. Why? Hmm. This is from The Observer, May 3rd, 1998. The author presents herself as if she were a scientist, a psychoanalyst, or an unimpeachable moral authority. She is not. She is a journalist, publishing her work to coincide with the 30th anniversary of Martin Brown's murder, earning substantial money from it, defending her work as in the public interest, yet refusing interviews with the press because of her commercial deal with the Times, which is serializing the book. So, here's why people freaking hate it. You have two dead children, a killer who, yeah, was young, but now she's out, she's... 40 something she helps write a book and the author of the book and her mary bell both receive money for it oh Ooh. don't like that you're you the killer is getting oh that is not right i, I don't like that. i don't like that <laughs> it's kind of disgusting isn't it I mean, I Mary get it, the author do, gets profit no but... she's paying for the interviews Kind of not Ooh, cool, It's like man. almost like I wish you didn't buy the book. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I, I steal all my books from Barnes & Noble. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> but you know me what I mean? Second, let me just... It's kind of like it would make me, if I if I knew that about a book, I, I would not buy it purposefully. So to me, that's not really the reason I hate it. The reason I hate it is because she is easily influenced by this woman. And it's just like, come on, change the fucking record. Like, ask her some real fucking questions. Not like, oh my God, your parents made this whole thing happen. It's just like, oh my God, please. Anyway, Mm -hmm. I got to move on. This is what Mary Bell did after she killed Martin Brown. Mm -hmm. Like, literally the day after. Mary had called with other girls at Martin's house after his death. Mrs. Brown said the boy was dead. Mary smiled and said, I know he's dead. Mrs. Brown looked at her, incapable of speech, and Mary went on. I want to see him lying dead in his coffin. Oh, weird. <laughs> that was from The Guardian. And how old is she? You didn't. I don't know if you told you us didn't yet. Tell oh, us. she was 10 years old when she killed Martin. The day after she killed him, she turned 11. But she says, I know he's dead. I want to see him laying in his coffin. 
the That's day after fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked and this up. and at this point they didn't obviously know that she was the killer yeah at this point they didn't know it took a while because okay. like i said the police didn't give a shit <laughs> well she was so she was 10 years so two murders in a year had occurred yeah okay so this is from the guardian the 6th of the the 6th of december 1968 so this is mary bell right here interesting what do you notice about her well she's she's got the bowl cut Mm -hmm. look at those eyes everyone everyone that knew mary bell that had interviewed after this i'm talking about like the recent documentaries and stuff like that every one of the victims because there are other victims just not murdered victims i mean she was a bully so she terrorized other children literally terrorized them they would all say the same thing about her eyes they have this way of trapping you in her eyes there's just it, it's just like you're staring into just a black hole yeah and this picture this picture right here doesn't really do it justice because it's black and white but she apparently had blue blue eyes yeah you can real kind of blue. tell that she had light eyes real blue eyes and they're just proportionate so much that you just get lost in them and it's not a good lost it's not like staring in my beautiful wife's eyes oh <laughs> you know what is what do you want <laughs> allow me momentarily because it's kind of creepy that picture on the left uh, it, her bowl cut is similar to my. Bowl I was cut. gonna. I was gonna say this is this is Jen's hairstyle. So she has a better bowl cut and better eyes than Jen. <laughs> oh my god! It's Jen. Oh my god! <laughs> it's literally. <laughs> it's literally me. Creepy. Yeah, that is you. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not going to say this on the podcast, but I'm going to replace no. <laughs> her photo with yours. <laughs> Stop it. Not funny. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So so apparently her eyes, man, like her eyes will do it. And I hear a lot of people say that about psychopaths. They have. You know, kind of like eyes like mine, where yeah. you just kind of get lost. <laughs> I was just going to say, eyes just like yours, John. All right, let me talk about Mary Bell. Born May 26, 1957, she was the eldest of four children. Her mother, Betty, was 17 when she had Mary Bell. Mary Bell actually turned 11 after the murder of Martin Brown. Her mother, Betty, was a prostitute at the time. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Even though they'll deny it up and down, that's what she did for a living. She met Billy, which was the stepdad, if you will. Billy Bell. She met him two months later, and then Mary Bell was re-registered under Billy. They basically went back and doctored the the birth certificate Mm. that said, this is your biological father, this guy I just met. Billy he's your dad your real dad so she grew up thinking that Billy was her real dad you know right but they did have to hide the fact that they were married if you will from social security and stuff like that so they could get they could get yeah they can each get separate benefits there you go very good in fact when the census people or whoever came to the door mary bell and her younger siblings and the mother and even billy would all claim that he was the uncle he was Mar- he was betty bell's sister okay even though they were you know married if you will they did that to get the social security benefits and the kids actually had to call him uncle especially when mm. You know, when the uh, census takers would come around. The mother, Betty, did not want her at birth. And in fact, later on, while Mary Bell is sitting in prison, she writes the mother a letter blaming her, saying, how could you do this to me? This stuff is a very tumultuous relationship. 
Betty Bell did not want Mary at all. For years, she tried to give the child away to complete strangers. She actually tried to kill Mary four times, and the law was involved. All this is documented. When Mary Bell was born, the mother said, quote, take the thing away from me, Mm. end quote. So pretty bad. That is terrible. They lived at 70 White House Road, the, the photo I showed you earlier. Mary may have been abused sexually by Billy mm. or by someone because she was a bedwetter and the mother mm. went so far as to rub her nose in it Oof. like a dog, oh, rub her nose gosh. in the bed. Her mother, Betty, was a prostitute. Like I said, she exposed Mary to child sex abuse with her clients. And that is that may be what spawned the bedwetting, because as we know, And this isn't in all cases, but bedwetting a lot of times is linked to sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. That's why they think JonBenet Ramsey was wet in the bed, by Mm -hmm. the way. I remember. But. Well, then they also found that DNA in her panties as well. That's true. I forgot about that. But that's not always the case. So if you're if you were a bedwetter, don't automatically think that because it's just. It's kind of like that triad, the McDonald triad, like sometimes all the stars aligned, you know. Mm -hmm. Mary Bell got a a temper very quick. She was a bully. One surviving victim later said, quote, Norma, Mary Bell's older friend by two years, Norma pinned us down and Mary had grabbed us by the neck and started to strangle us. She started getting sand and started pouring it in my nose. When that wouldn't work, she opened this victim's mouth and started pouring the sand in the mouth, using her fingers to try to stuff it down as far as it can go. Yeah, so she was was terrible. On May 11th, 1968, before the the first murder or anything, John Best, a three-year-old, was found at the bottom of... And a, an embankment behind some homes. He claimed that he was pushed off the ledge by two girls, but he refused to give their names because he was so scared of Mary Bell. And even if you watch the interviews of some of the victims she bullied, mm-hmm. you can tell that they're kind of still afraid of what she could do. Apparently, this girl was fucking evil, like de- the devil seed. In fact, a lot of the papers when she was in in trial called her like the devil's seed and stuff like that. So going back to the book right quick, that was one of the reasons the author was so for Mary Bell is because the, the papers would labor label horror as, you know, like a demon child, yeah, demon child, stuff like that. This is a quote from Mary Bell. This is from the book. I didn't have any sheets or blankets, just bits and pieces like an old coat on top of me. There was just a mattress which had a dip in the middle where the urine collected. And I was always up very early. My bed was always wet. And when my mother was there, she would rub my face in it. And I had to haul the mattress out onto the windowsill so that everyone could see because she said I was doing it just to spite her. Hmm. Yeah. That's pretty shitty. Terrible freaking childhood, man. I mean, to give her credit... An absolute terrible childhood. Not only growing up yeah. in in abject poverty, but being abused by her mom's clients. Mm. Two big girls came in. The smallest one of the two girls told me to get out of the sand pit. I said no. She put her hands around my neck and squeezed hard. The bigger girl was behind the hut playing. The girl took her hands off my neck and she did the same to Susan. The girl who squeezed my neck had short, dark hair. I don't know this girl, and I had not seen her before. So these are just victim police documents that were filed. So these children would file police reports because their parents probably made them. They knew it was Mary and Norma Bell, but they would never say it was them. Probably because they knew that she'd kill them. I mean, she, you know, she's crazy. Craziness. So this is the uh, detective. So at the fu- at the funeral of Martin Brown, this is the detective that actually noticed that it was probably Mary Bell because they eventually figured it out. And I- I'll tell you what, tell you how in a minute. But Mary was standing close to the house when the coffin was brought out, and he was watching her. 
It was when I saw her there that I knew I did not dare risk another day. She stood there laughing, laughing and rubbing her hands. I thought, my God, I've got to bring her in. She'll do another one. Oh, man. So this is Norma Bell. Wait, on the right. Yeah, on the right. This is Mary and Norma Bell. Norma Bell's on the right. They're best friends, Norma Bell and Mary Bell. No relation. They- That's fucking confusing, but... <laughs> Well, no one knows Norma Bell. So when you hear people talk about Mary Bell, they very rarely bring up Norma Bell. They look like they could be related. Maybe Billy fathered Norma unknowingly. Here's why they never bring up Norma Bell. Number one, she was acquitted for the murders, even though she was there. But, and I I see this a lot in these old cases, they use the term simple-minded. So Mm. she was... Not all there, even though she was older. She was two years older. So you would think... But she had like an intellectual disability. She she had an intellectual disability. So the courts, and if you read through the court documents, they say that she was under the influence of Mary Bell, and she would never act like this on her own. And most people believe that. You know, I mean, it's easy to see that she was just going along with the ride. Norma Bell moved in the spring of 1967. They're not related, Norma and Mary, but they became really good friends. Norma, her home situation was this. There were 11 children in the house, 13 people in the home, which y'all saw the home. That's that is a tight fit. Yeah. She was also kind of a a delinquent her and Mary Bell would often run away. And on one occasion, she ran away and an older man, I think he was like 35 or something, had raped her. After that, they began getting in trouble together and running away all the time. And she actually would run away to this guy's house after he raped her. And they would continue this sexual relationship. She was 12 at the time. Poor thing. The, both of the girls made a pact between each other. They said they want to kill somebody and then run away, quote, somewhere to the wilds of Scotland, living with horses, end quote. So they see they loved Western movies and they see how these Western movies play out. And the fact is, they don't really understand the finality of killing someone. They just think it, it'd be cool to be kind of a desperado. And they always talk about running away and living in with the horses. And stuff. I mean, we just covered two cases with these girls thinking just like that. And then they walk for five hours and now they're on the Mm. side of the road begging for food. You know what I'm saying? Like they, something in their mind thinks they're just overconfident. I think, Mm. you know what I'm saying? But anyway, they were idolizing these Western films and they thought that they wanted to do that at the time to run away after they killed someone and live with the horses. That's that's the pact they made. So they actually made a murder pact. Now, this is the second victim. So there's only two victims here, both killed by both of these girls. Before I show you the picture, I'm not trying to be distasteful, but the victim is also a child. The portrait of of the victim just tell me what you think not trying to be distasteful but look at this photo is that not an epic stare right there it, it's it looks like it's the actually blues. like a really good drawing yeah overall. it almost looks no, like that's something a, that's that a, michelangelo drew he looks like a cherub like a che- yeah i was gonna say cherub but that stare it, it reminds me of the blue steel on uh zoolander, it is quite zoolander. The look. look at that look man that's really sad. Like, that's, wow. That's like, I, I don't know. It's weird. I mean, isn't it weird? It's crazy. But For that, that to be a, vic- a, a portrait of a, vi- like, that's the victim picture? Or is that a portrait that was a drawing that was done before the, the I, child was killed? Because- honestly, I, th- I just thought that was the regular picture until y'all said it was a drawing. I mean, oh. I thought it was a regular picture. Oh, Maybe no, it you is can a drawing. tell it's a drawing. Look at the, the detail in the, yeah. in the clothing. But that, that, fo- that face, man, like, it's just... Very serious. I know. Isn't it crazy? Isn't that yeah. the craziest picture you think you've ever seen of a child? It's definitely weird. Yeah. It, it's intense. Yeah, it's very intense. It reminded me of Blue Still. 
I'm not trying to be insensitive, but that is the first thing. I mean, you think you see this photo, you're yeah, like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. That's I literally annoying. thought it was something pulled out of the Sistine Chapel. So I mean, yeah, yeah, it looks like a cherub drawing. I, would, I agree, Jen. That's what I was thinking too. All right, so this is the next victim and the final victim. His name is Brian Howe. He shares the same name as the singer from Bad Company, which I believe also is dead. Bad Company. Is that the one I'm that's... I'm in love with a girl talking about... All right, that's Bad Company. Fuck, I, I thought know. Bad Company was the one with uh, that did the... Um, <laughs> The animal song, the... No, that's Bloodhound Gang. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you knew exactly what I was talking about, I'm pretty about, sure though. the song that I'm singing is Bad Company, though. I'm probably... I mean, I'm most likely wrong. I don't know. It might be on my Rocksmith In game. I'm not sure. Oh, great song. You know what song I'm talking about, right? You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like we do on the Discovery Channel. Check it out now. Okay, those are not the lyrics. This is Brian Howe, three years I'm and four sure months. This is Brian Howe, three years and four months old. Curly, light blonde hair, pink and white complexion. He has not grown out of babyhood yet. This is from the no, papers. No, it does look mm. a, like a baby. He Just lived, like Cupid. He lived with his father, Eric, a seven-year-old brother, Norman, a 14-year-old sister, Pat, and an older brother, Albert. The mother left when he was a year and a half. Brian Howe's body was found in a position where police actually believed there was a pervert on the loose. Oh, no. He was naked and spread eagle, and he had damage to not, I don't think it was his genitalia, I didn't see that, but around his thighs there were damage. Now, this is the killing of a 10-year-old, Mary Bell and Norma. Okay. So Norma was not an active participant. No, she was. She was an active participant. But they were saying that because she, she was, was influenced by the action. She was simple of minded. Simple yeah. minded and inf- heavily influenced that she was not like the lead there. And therefore, she not was at well, fault. she no, she was completely acquitted wow. for it. For for both of these murders. So Brian Howe died between three thirty and four thirty p.m. PM on July 31st, 1968. The investigation resulted in Mary Bell and Norman Bell being arrested. They had visited 1,200 children within days, and among them was Mary Bell and Norma Bell. So Brian Howe had extensive wounds that was done by a pair of scissors. Oh. And... The reason that they really knew it was Mary is because she had asked about the scissors, even though that information wasn't publicly available. She had given that information out. So they immediately knew. Well, they kind of already knew. I mean, you heard the detective saying this. She's going to do it again type of thing. They already were on her, if you will. But at first they thought it was just pervert. Forensic tests showed gray fibers and Mary Bell was wearing a gray dress that day and it did match. Both her and Norma gave really outlandish, confusing statements that contradicted themselves and it just hurt my head reading them. They're all false and it's really hard to get the exact truth of what happened. But basically, this is what actually happened. This is from her. This is what she says happened. Lift up your neck. She put her two hands on his neck. She said there were two lumps you had to squeeze right up. She said she meant to harm him. She got him down on the grass and she seemed to go all funny. You could tell there was something in the matter with her. She kept on struggling with him and he was struggling and trying to get her hands away. She left go of his arm and could hear him gasping. She squeezed his neck again and I said... May, leave the baby alone, but she wouldn't. She said to me, my hands are getting thick. Take over. And I ran away. May is obviously Mary Mary. Bell. Yeah. So this is Norma. Hmm. So Norma's like, May, leave the baby alone. And then she runs away. So this is what most people believe happened. But I'm telling you, there are literally countless false statements out there that they both the girls gave first because they didn't want to get in trouble obviously all right so here's what happened they killed this boy then they go home to get some tea 
and they kind of talk about it. Okay, we can't say anything. I mean, I don't even know why they would do this. They they stripped him naked, took scissors, and started stabbing at his thighs. It's really weird. And I don't know if I put this quote in here, but one of the detectives says something to the effect of, the reason they figured out it wasn't a pervert on the loose is because the whole crime scene... The whole crime scene felt very childish in nature, almost like they were playing and things got too far. It was very childish how he was found. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why they started interviewing all these kids. Mary and Norma, they go home, they get some tea, they come back around 5 p.m. Mary said to Norma, quote, I want to make him baldy, end quote. And she cut a lump of his hair off his head near the front and put it on the grass above his head. She then pressed the scissors into his belly a few times. Mm. So not only the thigh area, but also the belly, just stabbing him. It's just a 10 year old man, just like complete, just deranged. And then they, they released Holy her shit. from prison. Yeah. She, we'll get to that. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll get to that. This is where the boy was found. Well, did you already read this? Go ahead and read this. I lifted Brian's head and shoulders up a bit and patted his back, but his hand fell on one side and I laid him down again. I felt his pulse, but it wasn't going up and down. May pressed the razor blade down on Brian's belly a few times in the same place. So it was actually scissors, but they use the word razor blade. Mm. So this is where he was found. I know it's kind of a grainy picture, but... Here, oh, this like, is it's, you can tell it's, this is X marks the spot. That's exactly where he was found. So if you go back here, it's to the right of this picture. I know these are really old pictures, so but this is a, not even the seventies yet. So that's where he was found. I th- I think it's interesting. So they're both um, little boys that they're murdering. Is mm-hmm. there is there something to that? Well, no. I mean, because like I said earlier, they all hung out together and Mary was the bully. She bullied everyone, even the older kids. Everyone was scared of her. If you hear the victims interviewed today, the ones that were bullied, they're still scared of her. So, I mean, it's more of an opportunity thing. She she basically here's how it goes. This three year old is walking in Rat Alley with all the rest of the kids because that was normal. She would just take take the hand of the kid and just, you know, come along with us. Let's play over here. And then just start choking him. I don't know. It's very sadistic. I mean, very psychopathic. I honestly think she's a straight psychopath. Anyway, I know this is kind of long, but can you read this? Brian was lying on the ground between two concrete blocks on the tin Lizzie. His left arm was stretched out from his body and his head was black with dirt. Lying on the grass nearby was a pair of scissors with one blade broken and the other bent back. His body, fully dressed and most of it apparently unharmed, was covered with a carpet of the long grass and purple weeds which grew all over the tin lizzy. There were, however, scratch marks on his nose, traces of blood-stained froth at his mouth. His lips were blue and no possibility of an accident here. Pressure marks and other scratches on both sides of his neck. Later, they would find other small, inexplicable injuries. He was dead. So, as I said earlier, that's where he was found. That X is exactly where he was found. Just laying there naked, spread eagle, with puncture mo- or with puncture wounds. Norma Bell actually took detectives to where they had hid the scissors. So, under one of those rocks you see... Or somewhere around there, they hid the scissors. Norma Bell is the one that took the detectives there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really like, interesting. Do we think that is just like an X where they found him, or do you think that's like no, a cross memorial? No, 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 that's the that's the. Um, well, I know you said that's where they found him, but it almost looks like it's like a. Cross, no, that's like, the, the the paper that I pulled that from said X marks the spot oh, where okay. his body was found. That's where they found him. Mm. The pale pressure marks on his neck and nose and the lightness of the stab wounds were six tiny puncture wounds on his thighs and legs and a small area of skin loss in the middle of the scrotum were all much more tentative. Then such injuries would had they been caused by an adult and clearly indicated the actions of a child or children. The detective on the case said, quote, there was no anger. None one could see. None one could feel. 
There was a terrible playfulness about it, a terrible gentleness, if you like. And somehow the playfulness of it made it more rather than less terrifying. I mean, what do you guys think, man? Kind of crazy, isn't it? It is. That is. It is crazy. All right, so that's the story. I'm. Let me get into the sentencing and all that stuff. What do you guys think happened? Obviously, I told you Norma was acquitted. No one, if you hear the word Mary Bell in the case of Mary Bell, Norma Bell never comes up. That's, I mean, Mary is the, the ultimate one that people talk about. And this is from uh, The Guardian here, May 1998. It says, Norma Bell, no relation, was acquitted. Although two years older, she was deemed to be a passive partner, a slow-witted, fragile girl led astray by her quick, devious partner. Her reaction to the trauma seemed normal. She cried, stumbled in her speech, was uncomprehending. Her escorts hugged and comforted her. She was just a little girl. Now, she is two years older than Mary, right? So that was kind of a point of concern. Right. I mean, how would how are you going to imprison the one that's two years younger when they're both, you know what I'm saying? I get that. Yeah. But at the same time, if someone has, you know, an intellectual disability, like they, they seem to assert that Norma mm-hmm. did, did she really understand what was going on? Yeah, but did a 10-year-old understand what was going on? I mean, if she's the <laughs> Well, I would say... She knew what she was doing based on the interviews that she had, the comments she made at the wake and and the fact that she was kind of the lead person. I would say, yeah, she understood what's going on. It's unfortunate that she was only 10 years old, but that doesn't mean she didn't deserve to be Mm -hmm. uh, held accountable for her actions. Here's what I think. I think she was doing the actions that she was seeing at home. Her mom was a prostitute abusive relationship i mean you just don't you don't come out to abuse kids you right. learn that shit well man. yeah i i mean in the nature versus nurture debate i'd say that nurture plays a larger role than nature uh, for most cases i mean there are some times that you know people do have some proclivities to actions and that you know especially if it's um kind of fueled by a mental disorder but but nurture plays a role. If she if she was being abused sexually, if she was if her, she saw her mom being abused um, physically, you know it it does not excuse the fact that she murdered two children. Um, it's very unfortunate that that happened to her. But there's it, and I guess well I can't really say there's other ways that you can kind of. Um, reach out especially back during the time that it was in the 1960s um i don't know what the culture was like in in the united kingdom as far as the 1960s and mental illness but um but if you're also throwing in the fact that she was in a very poor community that was not Mm -hmm. supported by um you know the by law enforcement or other government agencies um but it's it's sad it really is an un- an unfortunate happening, but it doesn't excuse the fact that she took that those actions to the extreme that she took them to. Yeah, that's a good point. In the next case, I don't know, man. My mind's starting to change with these crimes because the next case, the kid says that it's mental illness, but then again, man, you you still know what you're doing. You know right and wrong in some of these cases. This kid that we're going to talk about claims he was mentally ill, and yeah, maybe, but dude, you still know right from wrong. When you don't have any responsibility is when you were not there presently in your mind, like you, you know, kind of like Richard Chase. Mm-hmm. Like he was, a, he had psychosis, uh, DID, yeah. Yeah. you know? Uh, Anyway, shit, let's wrap this up. So Mary was found guilty of manslaughter on grounds of diminished responsibility. After the crime, she was named both a monster and a victim. She was 12 years old when she was sent to prison. It was a private prison, but she was the only girl along 20 or so boys. She was raped. And I do believe she was raped the whole 12 years she was in prison. She served all of her time. That's bizarre that there was not a female. 
I mean, you know, okay. At this, prison. if you read the papers, yes, they villainized her. I think a little too excessively. For instance, villainized or victimized? Um, sorry, villainized. And that's why they kind of just threw her in with all these kids, these boys, and raped her. I mean, I think she got raped all the time. Well, I'm pretty sure she did. I mean, I, she she says she did. Well, and, I'm and sure even, she did. Even by the correction officers, they would say that they would take turns and stuff like that. That's what she the said. Correct, well, I be, because listen, she was villainized by the entire world at the time in the papers. In the papers, she was labeled a psychopath. The term that the judge used constantly with her and not Norma was that she was, quote, wicked. She was eventually labeled as a, quote, bad seed and a freak of nature and evil born. This is all during the trial. They, however, never, ever in the trial of Mary Bell went into her background. They just labeled her as a quote freak of nature even when the judge says you're wicked and you're a bad seed y- you know you ain't getting out easy i think that <laughs> well so i think that her actions most certainly were wicked but if you're i mean again going back to that time period you're not you're not going to take a look at their at their background really well she had a psych she had multiple psychiatrists and that's what they do I mean, shit, when I was diagnosed with, uh, what's the one, one of the many things I have? PTSD. A- ADHD. I was diagnosed with ADHD. When you're diagnosed with that, they actually go back through your childhood. A lot of the diagnosis with that is, you know, t- uh, about your childhood. Yep. They were multiple psychiatrists on her side, even. None of... Any of them went into her childhood at all. They would have seen that the mother is abused. She's a prostitute. She was having her clients sexually abuse Mary as a child. Like they didn't go into any of this. So the judge and the especially the jury, all they hear was this is the spawn of Satan. And they would use a word like evil seed evil born but freak of nature to be totally honest that doesn't surprise me i mean cuz we have a totally different world view of the way that people are treated in their childhood now like if she were to go if she if we were to replay this case and this were to happen in 2021 then they would most certainly go into that background but this wasn't yeah. 2021 they 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 mental illness wasn't really totally understood at that time and or not just mental illness but like trauma and things uh, things of that nature were not understood it was kind of pushed under the rug no matter where you were people didn't want to deal with that it was you know so so the fact that they didn't go into that was it fair in today's standards, no. But back then, you can't expect them to go into those. And it's... it's but they, they did go into Norma's background. So here's... If you read the trial transcripts in the papers, it goes like this. You have an innocent child who is also the victim of Mary Bell, Norma Bell, who's also two years older. And then you have the evil... They, they basically made a devil and an angel situation out of the two you know what i'm saying and they basically compared them <laughs> i'm not, not saying this is fair but they take a look at norma bell who they say has who is they called simple-minded and they it, she's much more likely to fall under the uh, the um you know to be taken under the wing of someone who is uh, who is totally there in their right mind now in their right mind doesn't they didn't go into the trauma of mary bell but you know someone who appears to have all of their faculties who knows right from wrong doing this and going forward versus someone who doesn't know right from wrong doesn't understand right from wrong um and may not have i mean it's it's it was two different situations i'm not saying it was good or bad i'm just saying that's kind of probably the the mindset that they were in back then i need to say and i didn't do this case so i didn't mention it but One of the reasons they were so hard on her is because a few years before there was another murder of a child. And honestly, I cannot even remember. It was two boys that had murdered a another child, just this almost the same as Mary and Norma. And honestly, I can't I'm looking up right now what it was. 
but I can't find it off the top of just searching. But I knew that was still in the minds because the papers, all the papers that I read would always bring up that murder and compare it. So I think I think that didn't help her at all either. I, I, I wish I would have at least put the name in there. I can't remember. It was two boys. They murdered, I believe, another boy. I didn't go into the case, but I know it happened like a few years earlier in the same neighborhood. So... I love what Dee said here. A child's perception of cruelty is skewed once they're given no opportunity mm. to escape. Yeah, that's brilliant. <laughs> cruelty is part of the reality. I feel terrible for this girl, Dee says. Yeah. Um, I just want to go back to the point you said that she was thrown into into the juvenile yeah, hall she, with the boys. I'm surprised that they didn't separate her. Oh, they, they didn't care about her. She was, I mean, her mom's a prostitute. She's in the poor. But still, I mean, you're... She, and she's Satan. But so, so, so but after... Sorry. Oh, no, they no, get no. a lot of shit for it. Don't. I mean, they. Yeah. I mean, society gets a lot of shit for kind of letting her down with that. You know. Well, they should get shit for it because you don't just. I mean, juvenile uh, the boys. Boys are typically more likely to be in. I mean, especially back then um, in, in juvenile justice than than girls were, even though I mean. That doesn't mean that girls are perfect. They're certainly not. And I, you see girls go into the, to the justice system nowadays here, and I don't know what it was like in England back yeah. then. Hashtag but, free Shayna Hubers. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hell hath no fury like a woman's goal. We're not talking about we're not talking about adults. We're talking about children. I know. I'm just saying. But I'm saying. But but I mean, it, like they should have. They should have kept it separate because especially if the boys were in for violent crimes um they should they should have kept her uh separate so she was locked up at red bank institution she was 13 and in the first three months she had accused which is pretty much i mean you believe her that the house master was actually molesting her the Mary Bell Law or the Mary Bell Order now allows her identity to be protected by the courts. And it's kind of interesting if you if you go into that, the reason the the reasoning behind that, the thinking behind that is because at the time Mary Bell actually had a daughter. Here's the reason they protect her identity from the courts. It's because of to protect the offspring, the baby, the daughter, her daughter, you know, protect her daughter. From, you know, from the freaking media storm in her door and, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? So at the time she had a teenage daughter and the teenage daughter didn't even know that her mom was the infamous Mary Bell. That's how good that they they did to protect it. I bet she was pissed when she found out, though. Fuck. Anyway, this is interesting. I saw. So Mary Bell's partner, uh, a guy, I don't, I don't know. I guess they never got married. I'm just going to read this. Uh, this is from that Observer 1998. A 40-year-old Jordy with a ponytail tattoos and a lived-in look certainly gave reporters value for their money. Now, this is after they found, because the reporters did go find Mary Bell after she had changed her name and was protected. They still found her. So she had to rechange her name and now I don't. I think she's obscure. You can't even find. I mean, you could, probably could find her if you wanted to, but I don't think anyone does. Anyway, he walked to the beach, followed by a posse of cameramen. Took off his shoes, paddled, and cried. Later, in a dinghy bar, he drank whiskey and beer and poor. And this is her partner. The dinghy bar. There's I know. a dinghy <laughs> bar. Yes. That's what I was thinking. The dinghy. It's La- such a great name, it actually, is. for a bar. Yep. Late, later in a dinghy bar, he drank whiskey and beer and poured his heart out into a series of headlines. Mary was the most gentle person he had ever met. He loved her so much it hurt to mm. be parted. She had always wanted to work with children. That was her, her goal once she got out of prison. But she obviously can't. 
Which I was like, I but, yeah, feel like there's uh, probably something not right about that statement. But yeah, but that's the case of Mary Bell, man. I don't know. I hope you guys liked it. I kind of brought a different twist to it. Yeah. The sides I didn't want to take, there's most people would do two sides of it. Should she been in prison to begin with? And the pa- the media, the papers, the judge calling her wicked. Was she discriminated against? Because the other one, Norma Bell, she did, she was acquitted completely. No one talks about her. Like, was it unfair type of thing? I just kind of wanted to get into what happened, you know. But that was Mary Bell. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, talkmer.com I have the posts up there. So I already got like 300 shares up that motherfucker. It's a lot. 300 shares, a lot of comments. Oh, actually, let's read those comments right quick if you guys want. Yeah. Pam says, thanks for your excellent article. Quick two points. Are there sources of Bell being abused other than Serenity? Hmm. Not that I know. To answer, I don't know if you ever hear this, but where I, I learned it from was that book. So I didn't see it in any of the articles on the newspaper. I've searched through a lot of newspapers. I didn't see it anywhere where she was abused. In fact, the mother and the trial was very adamant that she was not a prostitute and that Mary Bell had a normal life growing up. But I mean, some things are obvious. Plus like Mary Bell came out and had spoken to the reporter and, but, but then again, can you trust her? Because he, even in the book, I know I'm harping on this book, but even in the book, the the uh, researcher, the author, Sereny, says at one point she doesn't know if she believes a certain story that Mary Bell has given her. I think Mary Bell is a true psychopath is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> like she is lying to this researcher and it is really and she's getting the fucking profits. I know, I know, of it. I know, I know. That's her. I know that, the yeah. people hate well, that shit. And, and to be completely honest, Ooh. for someone to lie about that, it's I mean, it's terrible. So if she was lying about the fact that she was abused, then she absolutely deserved to be imprisoned. I mean, I mean, but then she was wet in her bed. That the, the, uh, but was that a source from Sarah or sorry. other places? P- you can that eat- was a source from her. You that was her quote. So the quotes that you read were from her own mouth. Right, that was but like, if but she's, she's, saying she's a that, sociopath too, you don't know what's true. Right. Th- that's what I'm saying. And in fact, in the book, there was one point where the author was like, I don't know if I even believe her s- s- saying this. She actually said that once. And honestly, that book was fucking hard to follow, man. She was like really trying to go out to bat for this woman. And it's just, but it's also hard to follow the facts for her. I mean, it would be different if she was living in, you know, a a middle to upper class community that they were able to look into it. But if but since she was in, you know, such a tough place growing up, you know, number one, it kind of makes it a little bit more believable. But number two, you can't really confirm if no one was if none of the authorities were involved. Giselle says if you want to read her comment. It's quite disturbing that a girl that killed twice got the right to be unidentified and could keep her own child. I really don't think that I would like to discover that a baby killer was my next door neighbor, especially with my child around. Well, stop right there. That's a good point. But remember, the reason she got that and the reason we do that today is because she had a daughter. So the courts were not... They didn't care about Mary Bell's identity. They cared about the daughter. They mm-hmm. they were they they enacted that law that we see today because of the daughter who had nothing to do with it. She was innocent. Right. That's a good point though. I'm sorry. She did her sentence, but as but as she has the right to have a life, I have the right to protect my child from a murder that actually nobody can guarantee that will not kill again. As I said, how come she got a child she got a child and could keep it. That is a good point. I wonder if they have something like that, kind of like how they have like the sex offender registry. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, like a murder registry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if, I mean, you don't necessarily have to disclose your previous identity and what the crime was, but to say that just so you know, I'm on this list of criminals that has to disclose the fact that I, did this, but I did my time. Well, it, you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to say, like, who you killed and when it was and who what your name is. Does that make sense? 
Oh, shit. Read this one. I get comments like this all the time from uh, victim families. I don't... Now, we, we don't know if this is the actual victim family. This is... I mean, oh, anyone wow. could say anything. From Raymond Bryan's brother. Wow. Everyone has all their own theories, but no one ever thinks of the families that were left devastated by this. I was 10 years old when my brother Brian was murdered by her. My mother, myself, and family were just left to get on with it. No help at all. Television programs pestering us decades after the event, all for ratings. What a very caring society we have in the UK. Holy cow, that's really cool that, um, you know, he... Yeah. Well, if it is for him, sharing, yeah. Yeah, that is very cool. And then Alan responds to him, very sorry for your family's loss. It must have been very hard. Another response, my heart grieves for yours and your family, the loss of your brother. I, I mean, it probably is his... Most people don't log on and pretend to be the brother right. or a fucking victim. So good for you, Mary. If you want to read, I don't know, you just read some. Uh, if there was ever an opportunity to free her, it was right to do it. She was a very young child when it happened. Go for it, Mary. You've paid your debt to society, and I bet you're a good mom and grandma. So you, you see the different... The Very sizes. different yeah. points. Yeah, and you see why I didn't want to go down that road. I just right. wanted to present the fucking I murder. get it. But I don't know. So well, what do you think? If you're a fucking kid, you're a kid. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand the you finality You don't understand it. And like in America, for instance, this whole, oh, let, he's 14, but let's try him as an adult. Bullshit. We need to, an exact, like written in stone, if you're under this age... You are a child and you should be you should go to trial as a child or if you're an adult, you should go to trial as an adult. When I was 16, dude, I was doing shit that I would fucking never do today. I, I mean, I, we know you had blue hair and you were sent to military school. You were not the 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 star child. No, I was terrible. I was fucking terrible child. I was terrible. I would vandalize shit all the time. I would do drugs. I, I mean, dude, if I would have accidentally killed someone at 16, I'd be still sitting in goddamn prison now at but 35. But accidentally being like, or, or what do you mean by accidentally? Because if right. you actually took the intention and did it, that, that that's that's where it's hard for me to say what you're saying. But if I was 16 and somebody had pissed me off, like, I mean, dude, I, I if I would have killed someone, I wouldn't want to be in prison right now I don't the, think anyone 20, wants to be in I know, prison, but 20 though. years later, it's just like, well, shit, man. I, I mean, honestly, I wish I could go back to when I was 15 and not do that, but I can't. You know, I mean, I, I think we need a fucking real system. Hey, if you're 18 or older, you're an adult. If you're younger, I mean, dude, we did a case not too long ago where a fucking 10 year old was goddamn trying as an adult. What the fuck? A ten year old is not we, we a did fucking the case adult in, in South Carolina, where it was in, not even yeah the the child that did it. And he w if got you're the death if penalty. you haven't gone right. through fucking puberty yet, you shouldn't be tried as a yeah. fucking adult. I don't like this. Oh, let's try him as an adult because it was so bad. No, dude. No matter what happens, man. Even like the DC sniper shooters. Yep. That kid, he wasn't eighteen. He was like sixteen. Fucking let I, him go. I do agree. If there is, if there is a, that sounds a, shitty, but man, a, I'm saying a cut date for when you can smoke cigarettes, have alcohol, and enlist in the military, then there should be a cut date for when you're trying to. I adult. know, I know, and we just and, don't fucking. And I, get and it's that, not to man. say like people don't do horrible things when they're children. But, but I, I that's do agree. like the one thing that's flexible when all these other things that are so strict about smoking, yeah. drinking, you know, dying for your country, whatever, yes. like all that, that, yeah, so to I do, the T. I do agree with this comment here. I think, you know, she did pay her debt to society and man, I mean, if she's a psychopath, she probably doesn't care because that's the whole point of being a psychopath, but... Honestly, most people would not appreciate them themselves about their past like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's shit in my past that I fucking hate. But you know what? I'm not that fucking person anymore. You know? I'm different now. I don't go out and vandalize shit. My mind's different. I'm different. I would never do that. You know what I'm saying? But I understand the 15-year-old that does. I get it. Like, I was you. You know what I'm saying? I think that it, I mean. I don't know. I, you know what? Honestly, doing these cases, I think, has honestly kind of 
like I feel like when we started, I had a very firm mindset on it. But like thinking about, I, I mean, and I don't necessarily know if I agree with that comment because we don't know what she went through in prison, especially because of the time that she was imprisoned. Now, if it's today, I think that, you know, if it's a juvenile, like you need to make sure, and I'm, I don't know the ins and outs of the, of the justice system, but I think that there really needs to be a lot of, um, you know, therapy and rehabilitation before we let them out. And that doesn't, I don't think you can really put a time limit on that. I don't think you can say, all right, it's not like you're cured. Congratulations. Right. right. And, uh, but, but I mean, here I am, like, I, I struggle with it because like for me, I don't care. It's not that I don't care, but I feel like if you know right from wrong and you take the life of someone, I still think that you're accountable for that person's life. And I still think, I, I mean, it's tough. I but see you what your point of But do you think an eight-year-old would know that though? An eight-year-old doesn't always I don't know think the an right eight, I, 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 No, you're right. Especially if they see doesn't. their mom getting her, her face beat in by a client. Right. But I'm, but, but I mean, it, it's, it's tough so I think that before you know, uh, before you it. before you put a a like a, a sentence on them. I mean, if if you're trying them as a juvenile, and you know, you really I think before if you are trying them as a ju- if they are a juvenile, I think number one you need to have um a, a few um different opinions about what where their mental state is it you know you know from different people not just like one person having multiple appointments with them but you need to it, there needs to be a system because you don't just like commit the crime and then bam the next day go to jail obviously we know like trial is a very long process so i think that there needs to be a lot of um yeah, you can fake that too. Because in the book, Mary talks about, well, Norma was crying, and I should have done that. You know what I'm saying? Like she didn't. Well, yeah, you can fake it, but at the same time, you if you have trained professionals who are who are like if someone if if you cry with all three and two of them say I don't know if this is legit and one of them is like no, this is legit, you can kind of com converge your notes and if you like i don't i don't know there it really is i don't know if there's a right answer or not so if you go to the blog post you'll see i mean this is people are just at each other's throats with this man i uh, know it's an opposing view even this sure. case from the 60 68 you know what i'm saying i mean Hope, like, what a piece of shit. Hope Mary kills herself. See, Jesus I don't wish that on anyone. That's rough. So that's it. That's the Mary Bell case. What do you guys think? Can't wait for the next one. It was very, uh, I, I, I kind of like getting into debates with you. Yeah. About stuff like that. Well, yeah, because I, I kind of let you, you know, think you're right and stuff. But ultimately. Don's right. Well, yeah, we, the, we know this. We already know this. <laughs> that's not a question. Ultimately, the one that's editing the podcast the god of the talk murder to me. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he just like took certain words out of my statements to make it sound like and I agree with him. Together. John is amazing is what he just strung together. All right. So that was Mary Bell. I hope you guys liked it. That was a request from Malachi. We're trying to hit 300 by December 31st. 31st. And we're well on our way. The next case is Randy Stare. A YouTuber. Another Malachi request. Yes. A YouTuber turned mass murderer oh a youtuber he had a pretty big following and decided to do something horrible so we're going to get pretty deep into that pretty crazy case that was a big one a big case i had to go through the whole timeline of his youtube shits and then watch them videos didn't understand most of them but I think that's going to be a really interesting one. And that is one that no one hardly knows. It's not really popular. Anyway, that is uh, the case of Mary Bell. Hope you guys liked it. Talkmore.com. To see that post, you can comment on it and tell me what you think. I'll shout you out at the next episode. And we'll see you on the next one. Until then, my name is John. I'm here with Jen and Nicole. Good night, you lovely, lovely people.